using shape layers and after effects to make a cool planet. Uh, so I showed you this in the last video. Let's talk about how I actually did this. I'm going to make a new composition. Uh, HDV about five seconds. I'm going to grab the ellipse shape tool and draw a circle. Hit shift so that it is a perfect circle. One of the problems is that our anchor point here is not in the middle. The easiest way to get that is to double click on the anchor point tool and then move it over. So this is the anchor point to tool or you can just hit the Y and make sure that the anchor point is in the center of your object. I'm now going to go to a line and make sure this is in the middle. And we need this to kind of look like a planet. So make sure you're back in the selection tool. I'm going to turn off stroke by clicking the word stroke and saying none. And then clicking the word fill. And I'm going to turn on radial gradient and hit OK. Easiest way to fix the radial gradient, you can kind of pull it right here. But also just go down into your ellipse. So in your shape layer, you'll see the ellipse. Here is our gradient fill. And this is kind of where we can change things. So in color, just click Edit Gradient. And now we can add the colors that we want. So once you get that the way that you like it, we have a basic planet. Grab your ellipse tool again, and this time kind of draw like the rings of Saturn. And don't worry about that it's remembering that we had a gradient. That's not going to matter. Once you get that the way you like, go up and click on the word fill. We're going to turn off fill. Okay, and we need to add stroke, a solid. And green probably is not the best. I'm going to go with white, but that is up to you. And let's go look at what we have down here in this shape layer. Now people start getting confused, so let's do a little bit of organization. I'm going to click on the first shape layer, which is our planet. And I'm going to right click, rename that, and call it planet. And then let's right click and rename this one rings. And let's go look at the ellipse. Now, I have added dashes to it simply so that you can see it turning more. If you don't have any dashes, it's going to be kind of hard to see anything. So add the dashes, and you can make this look however you want. One thing that's going to help it be more circular is to turn it to round cap. And I've got my dashes at about 50, but that is up to you. So I have 50 for my dashes, my stroke width. Let's make that up. 20. Um, that's good for me. You can mess around with whatever you like. Then I want to rotate this entire thing. Remember, do not use this transform. Use the transform that is within the ellipse. So I just want to rotate it a little bit. Now we're going to go back and animate these dashes. That would be the offset. So go ahead and turn on keyframe for offset and animate that as fast as you want. I don't want too much going on. Let's see how that looks. Now we have that rotating. That looks great, except for those back lines need to be behind the planet. So we need to mask out part of this so that we can see, so that we can see these lines, but we don't see those lines and they look like they go behind. So what I'm going to do is use the circle to create a mask. So let's go back to what we had. I'm going to take planet and I'm going to say Control D to make a copy of it. And just so that we don't get confused, I'm going to change the color of this to something else. So that we can see that it looks different. This one called Planet 2, I'm going to call Mask. And I need to put it over the top of the rings. Well, right now it's masking out both sides. We just want it to mask out the back part. So we've got to do a little bit of changing. That's OK. First thing we need to do is change it from a shape to something that we can adjust. So I'm going to go to my ellipse, right click, and say ungroup shapes. And the reason it kind of clicked off like that is because, once again, the anchor point. So if you'd like to fix that, that was Y, and move that anchor point to the center. But you just need to move it back so that it is right on top. Once you've ungrouped the shape, you click on the ellipse path again, 
right click and say convert to Bezier path. Now that it's a Bezier path, you can change each individual anchor point. So if you click on the control, you will notice your selection tool changes. It's now a direct selection tool and you can grab just one of the points. So we want to click on this bottom one and move it up enough that it clears that front line of movement. You don't want it to go so far that you see what's behind it. We just want to mask out the very front. I'm going to move this one up just a tad. Okay, there we go. And you can see it's masking that out. But we don't want it to look like that. So let's actually turn it into a mask. We're going to go use the track map, which should be right here. If you do not see track map, it's because you've got it closed in these buttons here. So just collapse it or open it and you should see your track map. We're just going to tell it that the rings layer, I want you to use layer one, which is called mask, as a mask. So we're going to say, please use the layer called mask. Now, that's exactly the opposite of what we want. It's mask, it's, we need the reverse of that. So click on alpha inverted map for the layer called mask. The top one is masking out, so we do not see what is actually in front of it. So let's see how that works. That really wasn't that hard. So that's how you can make a simple planet using uh, two different shapes.